Hey, friends, it's Paul in the hall. Uh, welcome to Worship and Atonement Lutheran. We are glad that you're here. Uh, get comfortable, uh, get ready to, to bless God, and get ready for a very special announcement in the middle of the service, so be paying attention. Uh, we'll uh, take it away, uh, friends, over in the Worship Center. Morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Atonement Online. We're so glad you guys can uh, tune in and worship with us. And uh, let's go ahead and, and get rocking. Come, all you weary. Come, all you thirsty. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come, all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. Thank you for uh, 
another opportunity to come with you. And although we are not located within these four walls, um, you've proven to us time and time again uh, that four walls don't make the church. Uh, what makes the church is your spirit, your ability to go out into the world um, and create change and bring peace and bring forgiveness uh, to these, to us, uh, the un unworthy sinners. Um, so we take this time to praise your name, receive the good news, uh, and and praise and be happy with with what you get to do uh, with with your will. Uh, so bring your will to us uh, and. and let us take this time to get to know you better uh, so we can go forth uh, and, and, and bring your kingdom in your name. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died.
Father, we'll give you thanks today for a new day. Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And yet there are many across this globe and many across this land who are not rejoicing. And so, Lord, uh, let the joy of the Lord shine through us. Let the joy of the Lord bring about uh, peace. Let the joy of the Lord bring about change. Let the joy of the Lord bring about mercy. And let the joy of the Lord bring about justice. Let your joy shine through the life of your church. Let your joy shine through the life of the body of Christ. Let your joy shine, Lord, today. Lord, because this is the day that you've made and will rejoice and be glad in it. There are people that are hurting, Lord, there are cities that are hurting. But Lord, uh, cities are first and foremost made of people. And so we pray for the people in those cities that are torn about by conflict. We ask that the Prince of Peace, we ask that your peace would reign in those cities of our land. Lord, we also recognize there are people who need in stand of healing touch. We pray for Adam and Betty. We pray for Weston and Jerry. We pray for Kent. We pray for Mike. We pray for Erlis. We pray for Jan. We lift up Jeff. We lift up Dorothy. We lift up Shirley and Dan. We lift up Sharon and Maureen. Lord, all these people stand in need of your healing touch and many more. And Lord, out there in the internet and people watching we take a moment for those watching to to pray for those loved ones that need your healing touch and lord we're still mindful that the covid 19 virus is very real and very alive and we ask now that um, you would be with alan and karen who are near and dear to this congregation who have just been diagnosed and we ask that you would be with them and bring them your healing touch. Lord, we know you're a God who answers prayer because we can praise God with Jen who we've been praying for for almost a year now that she is cancer free and we lift up our voices and say praise the Lord, hallelujah, bless God that this has been made manifest among us. We thank you for that. And Lord, we also thank you for the saints who have been called home 
in the last few days. We pray for sympathy for the family of Milt Arneson and Helen Johnson. We ask that you would be with them and strengthen them according to the favor you bear your people. And so now, Lord, all these others, we'd ask that you would remember us, that you would remember your people who stand in need of your healing, your people who stand in need in sympathy, your people who stand in need of peace, your people who stand in need of justice. We'd ask that you would remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Friends, I am glad to be with you today. I, now, I was Paul in the hall a little bit earlier. We're having a little technical difficulties. We're getting that all ironed up. But uh, I've got some great news for you. And here's the great news. Uh, you've probably received the letter. Uh, if not, be looking for it. I got mine on Saturday. Also, there was an email sent out. I got mine on Saturday as well. And this is the, uh, uh, the focus of the email. The subject of the email is about regathering. Uh, we've never been closed. The church has not ever been closed. It's just that we've not been worshiping in the facility. But we're going to regather in the facility. And there are three things that I'd like you to know about regathering in the facility. The first thing is this. As we regather, we will be regathering in the facility. Don't come early. Somebody's already come early. We don't want you to come early. It's going to start on July 5th. We're not ready yet. Uh, July 5th, we'll have everything in place. And we want you to uh, come if you're able to on Sunday, July 5th. Uh, that will be at the 9 o'clock service in the sanctuary and the 1030 service here in the ark. Just to let you know, though, we will continue to broadcast. Uh, we're not stopping the broadcast. Uh, I want to thank you for all your encouragement. We will continue to broadcast both at 9 o'clock and at 10.30, the two services. That's going to stay the same, and that will continue to stay the same. We're just regathering for worship here in the facility, so uh, that's going to be at uh, 9 o'clock and 10.30, Sanctuary Ark, on Sunday, July 5th and not before then. We'll have continue the broadcasts on the following Sundays, the 21st and the 28th of June, but then on the 5th, that's when we start to regather. And again, we'll still continue the broadcasts. We want you to know you'll be getting another communication from us. This is an important communication. Uh, and that's about letting us know whether or not you're going to be able to regather with us. We recognize there are people at the lake. We recognize that there are people hopefully on vacations and being able to do that. But... We will need to know about how many folks are coming. There's going to be a, an email or a survey that's going to be sent out the week before July 5th. And we're going to ask that you let us know uh, at how many and kind of what family size groups, whether a family or a couple or a single. Uh, we, we need to know that. Uh, again, we are not restricting the number of people that are going to be coming. We're simply a matter of just want to know ahead of time. Uh, it's going to be uh, helpful for us to know that number. And again, we're not registering. And if you fail to do so, please don't worry about coming. You're welcome to come. It's just going to help us plan. That's what. And last but not least, at atonement.live slash regather, uh, there is going to be a, um, uh, uh, some information about as we regather. Recognize, please, that as we regather, just like everything else in our society, there's going to be certain uh, protocols, certain procedures that need to be uh, taken care of. So please make sure that as uh, uh, you'll go there and take a look at some of the things, uh, we're also going to send out a communique just to make sure that everybody understands it's not going to look the same. Uh, you, you need to understand that just like as people have gone back to various places and they haven't quite looked identical, uh, things will be a little bit different here and there. Hopefully, over time, we'll be able to get back into some sense of normalcy. But I just want to, I'm excited about that. July 5th, we will regather here in the facility, but again, the broadcast will continue.
Uh, now uh, it's our giving moment. I uh, want to thank you again for your generosity uh, over the time that we've been in this uh, uh, sort of uh, self-imposed exile uh, from the facility. You've been incredibly generous. There's a couple of ways that you can give. One is online. You can give at atonement.live slash give, and you can support the ministry that way. Or you can text your gift, and that would be to 833 623 0268. Again, that's 833-623-0268. You can give that way. They're both secure. Or you could uh, write a check, uh, send it to Atonement Lutheran Church at 4601 South University Drive, Fargo, North Dakota, 58104. Thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, again, God bless each and every one of you. And we look forward to uh, this next phase uh, uh, in what's going on as we regather on Sunday, July 5th. Thank you. Well, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, this is the summer in the Psalms. Uh, we've been uh, uh, going through the Psalms the last couple of weeks, living in the Psalms. The thing about the Psalms is that they are songs and prayers that get to our innermost um, selves, what we are feeling, what we are thinking. And when you read the Psalms, they have a way of interpreting you. Uh, you, you, get, you, get, you enter into them, and their language becomes your language. Today we're going to hear about Psalm 22, which according to the New Testament could easily be dubbed Jesus' Psalm. No less than five places do the New Testament writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, point to Jesus as the fulfillment of this psalm. In other words, this psalm is a prophecy and it's about Jesus. Jesus himself, from the cross, says the first line of this psalm, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, or, or my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, the scriptures say that he cries this, which could mean two things. It could mean he says, he says the psalm, I like to think that he sings the psalm because this psalm is attributed to David and right at the top of it makes a mention of what could be a tune or, or, or musical notes that go along with the words. And the thing about this psalm is that it is a lament psalm and it is a cry for help to God. But it also has a unique piece to it that half of it is a cry for help, and the other half is a song of praise. And so what we're going to do today, as we hear the psalm, as we dig into it, as we get immersed in the language, as its language becomes our language, there's going to be certain points where I'm going to encourage you to say out loud, whether you're sitting on your couch or your lazy boy, whether you're in a coffee shop watching this online, to say out loud, hallelujah which means praise the Lord. Because in these places where we find a need to lament, we also need to cry out to God in faith. And it's absolutely appropriate in good times and especially in bad times to say hallelujah because that puts us in a right relationship with our creator. It's a, it's a faith action to say praise the Lord, to sing praise the Lord. Um, and what we're going to discover in this psalm is a threefold death that Jesus himself identifies with at the cross. So, I think that hallelujah can often sound just like this. Take a look.
hallelujah is not just for those times of joy, times of tears, crying hallelujah puts us in a relationship whereby we can find hope and strength in the midst of loss. And that's what Jesus is doing on the cross. He's doing a few things. He's entering into a threefold death that encompasses much of where we see death in our day-to-day life. The psalm starts, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. The first loss in this threefold death that happens to Jesus happens to all of us as well. The first that we're going to look at is the loss of God. How often have you felt like God has forsaken you? That God has not heard your cries in the midst of your tribulation and your suffering? How often have you felt like God is far away or that God doesn't care? Jesus expresses the same thing from the cross, which is the cry of all of us who are sinners, that we don't trust God to be God, to be there for us, to be the one to take care of all of our needs, and especially when it seems like the whole world is in chaos and out of control. Where is God? It's very easy for us to turn on our TV or uh, look away from where God promises to be and look at the world and think, man, everything is out of control. There's so much chaos. Where is God in the midst of this in a, in a concrete, um, uh, uh, universal sense? but also in a very personal sense when we experience loss in our own lives. Where are you, God? I need you now. This absence of God is not a separation. I know some people have spoken about when Jesus is on the cross and he confesses this, that what is happening is God is separating from Jesus. I mean, ultimately, God is responsible for the cross. Why, this is the only way that God can reconcile a broken world to himself. And God is separated separated from Jesus. But keep in mind that God is omniscient and omnipresent. He's all-knowing, he's all-seeing, which means he's everywhere. Even if someone goes to hell, they are separated from God, but they're not separated from God. What I mean by that is they are separated from God's grace. In other words, God is not there for you. Rather, God is there against you. God is still there, but not as one that you can rely on. Not as one who will will be merciful to you. Martin Luther said that when we experience the absence of God or try to seek God in that absence, in his hiddenness, all we're going to find is God's wrath. Because God doesn't want to be known there. When we experience uh, a loss of God in our own life, wondering, where are you, God? Where we need to go is where he promises to be, where he has revealed himself, and that is in his son, Jesus. So right away, we have this confession that Jesus identifies with, the, the confession of the sinner. My God, my God, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? That doubt that comes in. But with that doubt, David, who is attributed for the writing of this psalm, adds this next piece. He he experiences the loss of God, but then there's a transition. And the key word is the word yet. And this transition is to confess, to praise, hallelujah, by words of promise. So every time you see a yellow word, know that I'm going to invite you to join in saying, Hallelujah, just as David instructs us to do as we get into this psalm. Yet you, hallelujah, are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, hallelujah, our fathers trusted. They trusted and you, hallelujah, delivered them. To you, hallelujah, they cried, 
and were rescued. In you, hallelujah, they trusted and were not put to shame. What are we confessing here with David? David is saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you slow to save me? And yet I know that you are holy. In other words, you are not the cause of my suffering. My suffering is coming from death itself, from the powers of this world, sin, death, and the devil. And that you are not the cause of my troubles. You are the, ones that I, you are the one that I can find rest in in the midst of my troubles. God is holy. But what David's now going to do is he's going to trans, tra, uh, transition back again to confessing the suffering that's being placed on him. And this is no different than in your own life. How often do we move in the midst of loss, in the midst of affliction, in the midst of, of the presence of death from hope to doubt and back again? We are not static. We don't just stay in hope or stay in doubt. We are moving back and forth in the midst of our suffering. And so we need a word from God that we can hope in in the midst of our doubt, in the midst of despair, in the midst of tribulation, suffering, and loss. So David confesses, God, you are holy. You're not the cause of my troubles. You're the cure for my troubles. But, but I am a worm. And God's people say, Hallelujah. And not a man scorned by mankind. Hallelujah. And despised. Hallelujah. By the people. All who see me mock me. Hallelujah. They wag their heads. Hallelujah. They make mouths at me. Hallelujah. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him. For he delights in him. Here we experience the second of the threefold death that is expressed in this psalm. It's the loss of social support. This is death. Death is not just the end of our bodies. Death happens throughout life. It, it most often happens by a rejection of others whom we love or seek help from. This is death of relationships. You see this when a husband and a wife, the marriage falls apart. It's a death. You see this in relationships between parents and children, between people at work, between friends, through um, acts of, of, of betrayal to just simple attrition over time as friends become acquaintances and become strangers. Death happens when we, when we feel that there is no support. And what happens to Jesus on the cross? He is betrayed by everyone. His disciples all desert him. Judas betrays him. Peter denies him. And they all f abandon him. He has to hang on a cross as he sees his mother crying for him. And he sees the soldiers, the authorities, those in power, stealing his clothing, and then gambling them away. And he has to view all of this. It's becoming indifferent in the eyes of those around you. It's the loss of social support. Then the Psalter says, then, Paul, then David says, and yet, hallelujah, yet you, hallelujah, are he who took me, hallelujah, from the womb. You made me trust you, hallelujah, at my mother's breasts. On you, hallelujah, praise the Lord, was I cast from my birth and from my mother's womb. You have been my God. Be not far, hallelujah, from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. And so what is this confession? When everyone turns their back, when everyone turns aside, when those who were friends or those who were, who were there to support become enemies, the confession of faith is, and yet I trust you, God. When Jesus is on the cross and he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
It can be easy to think that Jesus has entered into a doubt that has no faith. And yet, even though Jesus, in confessing these, li- these words, identifies with sinners who don't see God bringing uh, deliverance in the face of death, Jesus is faithful unto death. And even while hanging on the cross, being the Son of God, he does not step down, but he stays on the cross confessing through the, the pouring out of his life, I trust you, God, for you are greater than death. Now, David is going to transition another, uh, a fourth time in this psalm with this phrase. I trust you, God, but many. Again, how often do we bounce between doubt and faith when we are in the midst of suffering? Many bulls encompass me. Hallelujah. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. Hallelujah. They open. Hallelujah. Wide their mouths at me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like a ravening and roaring lion, I am poured out like water. The early church fathers and Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul all turn to this verse, verses 14 and 15, and say, This is about Jesus. It is a prophecy. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. Hallelujah. When Jesus died on the cross, from the events in the Gospel of John, we know that he died of a heart attack. His heart literally became like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up. Hallelujah like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. Hallelujah. Wasn't it Jesus who cried from the cross, I thirst? You lay me in the dust of death. Hallelujah. Goes on. For dogs encompass me. How often have we felt like the people around us are nothing more than wild animals by how they attack us needlessly. How they attack us without warrant. How Our persecutors are acting unjustly toward us. A company of evildoers encircles me. Hallelujah. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. That is a direct vision of the cross. As Jesus is stretched out, emaciated, and his hands and feet pierced. Hallelujah. They stare and gloat over me. Hallelujah. They divide my garments among them. Hallelujah. And for my clothing, they cast lots. Hallelujah. This is the third loss in the threefold death a loss of vitality. We experience loss by thinking God isn't. isn't with us. God has abandoned us. We experience loss when others turn on us. Death of relationships. Death of faith. And this is the one we most often associate with death. A loss of life. How many of us have experienced our bodies betraying us? Where the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. We're not able to do what we once did. This old bag of bones is slowly turning to dust. It happens to us all. Because we all seem to be under the power of death itself. Jesus enters into this loss. All three, a threefold complete loss, which is the power of death itself. For your sake. And as Christians, even when death breaks in, we have a hope that the world does not understand. A hope that allows us in the face of death to stand against death Confront death and oppose death by saying, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, because death is in undone in the Son of God who does death to death and enters into death for your sake. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly. Hallelujah. To my aid. 
Deliver my soul, hallelujah, from the sword. My precious life, hallelujah, from the power of the dog. Save me, hallelujah, from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me. That is a present promise that is already guaranteed by faith, even if it's not by sight. Hallelujah, from the mouth of the wild oxen. What is our response in the face of death? God, you are my help. And death will not have the final word as far as I am concerned. Jesus on the cross as he is dying becomes your sin and takes upon himself the wrath of the hidden God. God in his hiddenness, separated by, from God's grace and yet fully engaged and poured out upon him God's wrath. He does this for your sake because in uttering this psalm, Jesus becomes not just the greatest sinner of all time because he takes on himself your sins and the world's sins, but he also becomes sin itself. And so at the cross, sin itself dies. And it's Jesus who makes it so. Because in identifying as the sinner who cries out to God for relief, Jesus does something that the sinner cannot do. Jesus faithfully relies on his Father to do and carry out his will, which is to be merciful to whom he will be merciful. And in Christ being risen from the dead, Jesus is vindicated and sin, death, and the devil are undone. This is how the author of Hebrews puts it when identifying Jesus with Psalm 22. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, hallelujah, he left nothing outside his control. Hallelujah. At present, We do not yet see everything in subjection to him. In this life, all we see is the results of death. We see God's absence with our eyes. We see people turning on each other and turning on us. We see our bodies decaying. And yet by faith alone in Jesus Christ, we know that he has already accomplished all things. Hallelujah. Because we see him hallelujah, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, hallelujah, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for you. In other words, he might take upon himself your death, hallelujah, For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, that means sons and daughters to glory, folks, should make the founder of their salvation, Jesus Christ, perfect through suffering. Hallelujah. And those, for he who sanctifies, again, Jesus, he's the one who makes holy. Hallelujah. And those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed. Jesus is not ashamed to call you brother or sister. Hallelujah. Saying, and this is from Psalm 22, 22. I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will sing your praise. That's a way, that's a way of saying, I will cry, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The entire second part of the Psalms, we've moved through the cry for prayer is proclamation and a song of praise because God has overcome death for you. In other words, Jesus died on the cross for you, for your sake, in your place, on your behalf. And he has overcome the cross. He is risen. And that means death has been undone in all of its forms for your sake. This is the announcement that makes all things new. You are forgiven of all of your sins because of Jesus Christ.
And now your hallelujah is free to sound different and you are now a voice to be a witness with your hallelujahs to the world of what God has done for you. Check it out. It might sound something like this. Sing like that in front of a real audience? I don't know, but I want to try. Good. Because <laughs> I want to see. Jesus Christ died for you. Your sins are forgiven in Him. And now your hallelujah becomes a witness to the world that you have a God who loves you and loves them. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we cry hallelujah to you in bad times and in good times, because it is the right relationship that makes you our God, our Savior, and us the good creation you meant us to be. May hallelujah be on our lips and in our hearts in good and bad times, because Christ is risen, all things are undone, and everything is made new. Fill our hearts with that praise, and let us praise your name with every breath. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody has trials and temptations. Everybody knows how to break. Isolation
Thanks for joining us again for Worship, friends. We are glad that you were here today. Just a couple quick things. Uh, we, again, are regathering on uh, July 5th. Go to atonement.live, regather, and there's more information. But again, don't come before July 5th. Some, uh, we don't want to confuse you on that. It's July 5th, Sunday, and that's when we start to regather. And again, the broadcast will continue. A couple other things. As we regather on August 9th through 13th, we're going to be having our um, uh, vacation Bible school. This year it's called Rocky Railway. You want to be a part of that if you've got kids. Uh, go to the highways and the byways and compel them to come in, and we'll be doing it through uh, 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 in, in a new way, so uh, you'll find out more about that, but go to atonement.live and find out about uh, Vacation Bible School. Also, if you'd like to find out more about Atonement, sort of get connected, uh, you can uh, text uh, the word CONNECT, C O. N N E C T to this number 701 800 1009. Let me give you the number again 701 800 Zero one zero zero nine. Hopefully that's good. got that clear. Now receive the blessing which God has given to bless his people by. Friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all God's saints said, amen. Have a great week. God bless you. We'll see you next week.